you're doing multi cylinders, that's made, that's what it's more for. But um, you always want to make sure you blow all the dirt off everything, and I always you know, wipe everything, shop rag or pants. Um, let me introduce let me introduce you for a second here. Hey guys, uh, this is uh, Clay Jensen, owner of Sioux City Power Sports here. Uh, he's offered to have us, uh, our sophomores, come down here. We got an advanced engine building class here at Western Iowa Tech, and he's going to show us how to use this Power Sports boring bar. Um, works pretty slick and, and quite a bit easier than some of the uh, other uh, boring bars that are out there in your bigger machine shops. He's going to go through and just kind of give some of his basic tips and tricks and whatnot. You know, make sure they're always wiped off and clean because, you know, all it takes is a couple of specks of crap underneath there to throw it off a little bit. And then it, you know, by the time you get to the top of the cylinder, you're in left field. Um, like we said earlier about the gasket surface and stuff, just make sure it's good and clean. If it's nicked up on the edge, if you drop it or somebody use a hammer too hard to knock it off of there, you can take, you know, take a file and you can just catch the edge. If it gets into a ceiling area, though, um, you got a problem, you need to either machine it or weld it up, machine it down. It all depends on how bad it is. You remember the first, uh, and you guys might remember this from class, the first cylinder clay and I really learned that on. It's this rings a bell clay, that Harley, that Evo out in Riverside, where somebody took uh, a roll lock tool and basically rolled the edges off. Do you guys remember that from class yeah. last year talking about that? Um, kind of Sometimes you just learn that lesson one time and then it sticks with you forever. <coughs> uh, you want to make sure your parallels are good and straight you know that that everything on these are square I don't know when I talk about a parallel I guess um, you know that these surfaces are square and straight square and straight everything is the same height between the two that, that your blocks are are dead on Guess before I put that on there, it's easier to show upside down. If you look, I'm going to be dropping the cylinder on cylinder with this side down. This block, you know, you want to set it so you got good contact. So you know, on this particular cylinder, you got a nice big area of face to touch. Make sure that you don't get it in there, because uh, then you'll hit it with a boring bar, and then it'll hold it off cockeyed off center. You want to make sure you're on the bottom surface. How many cylinders do you think you guys are born? in a year. Do you have any idea? It's just too hard to say me by the month or year. You know, during the season, while I went on vacation for a week, I come back and I had, I had six, six, six sets of, six or eight sets of cylinders. No, I had one, one was a, one was a Polaris four-wheeler. So, that just happened to me in the one week while I took vacation in the winter time. We got loaded up with a bunch of them. Now depending on your shop, you have to take your studs out. This particular boring bar is a pull down bar. So it's, you know, you're always pulling down from the bottom. Um, I've bored on like overhead vertical mills before. You can use them to bore on. I've bored on lays before. Um, that's what makes a difference on whether or not you have to have your studs out. If you're born on a lathe, you have to have your studs up, because you, otherwise your tool length will be too long, your chatter. Uh, that's just all stuff you have to custom make jigs for or whatever. Um, anyway, I'm going to drop this in there. And, uh, you always kind of wiggle it, make sure there's the carbon and stuff is out of the cylinder. And then... Uh, and basically, guys, what he's got there is just a self-centering cone uh, that comes with the boring bar. That's not made. That's part of it. It's the reason it's so nice. Gets it really super close. And then we're actually going to, because it's got six head or six studs, you have to kind of rotate the cylinder. Um, it doesn't matter that you're perfectly looking at it. You know, as long as the parallels are in it, you can roll the cylinder any way you want to. You want to have your the 
angles of these have you don't want to have them angled down you want to have them way up but you want to have them tipped up just a little bit uh, and I usually I go in there and I get them stuck onto the uh, just barely touch the sleeve on stuff that's got sleeves on your Nicosil aluminum cylinders and stuff it ain't as important but what are you saying? I'm gonna highlight on that. Is you don't want that to end up in a water jacket, because you, when you're, if you're, if you end up at a water jacket, you're in, over a hole. Do you have any real estate that you're really clamping? You know, you're not. So you want to make sure and be a, as much as you can grab onto. Now, Clay, can you can you show? Uh, nope, that's not the tool yet. My bad. I told him about your custom-made uh, micrometer. <coughs> Yeah, right now what we're checking is uh, center, how uh, how close you are. This reads in half of a thousand, so this is pretty accurate. I remember when we we bought this machine years ago. They, uh, you know, the training on a lot of people didn't actually use uh, the gauge here. They were putting the self-centering cone on and then just going to town and still getting pretty good results but this is perfection right here clay is going to use every micrometer and dial indicator in the world he can to get it exactly perfect remember those winona guys talking about that down in kansas yeah you got to get i mean because sometimes you end up having to uh because of availability of over certain oversizes, you know, some big bores, you can only get a big bore and then you can get like, you know, five, five thousandths over bore. Well, it's extremely hard to get, you know, five thousandths on a long cylinder and be perfectly straight. So, now hopefully, I gotta take my, I gotta take this motor out clean it. When I use this jog button I blow a fuse every once in a while. Is that the cutter that you're putting on right now? No, right now this is a, this is a it's a micrometer that reads in oh, okay. um, I heard you talking half about that. thousands. So I'll, I'll, I'm just running it around. It's really like a dial in here, just mm -hmm. like the board mm -hmm. gauge that we were using yesterday. It's just a different style. It's got a little finger off the end of it that reads. It, it's it's made for a vertical mill. Um, now when you check, I'm zero from here all the way around over to here. The cylinder's reading all right. It's got um, it's got a spot that's that drops out on this side, which is a little weird. A lot of times you'll, you'll kind of get out around on the exhaust side, um, but that's actually back kind of on the an intake side where there's just a little drop in the cylinder and I've noticed with a lot of cylinders um, you'll get uh, if they've been bored a bunch of times they'll still the last person might have off board it board it crooked um, or out of center um, Harley cylinders are notorious for being, um, they're such a long cylinder that you'll, you'll start touching over here, you'll touch over here, then you'll touch for a while. They just sometimes, they kind of do some weird, weird shapes, but. Clay, these guys, while well, you're setting that up too, these guys um, all got experience in the uh, V-Twins class to use in torque plates. Yep. Um, we did do that for measurement in our, in our class there. And you will use those torque plates on this boring bar in, intentionally, just like we would for measuring, so you can bore that hole a lot straighter. Uh, they've changed like huge, huge, huge. And I, I've seen once almost, almost move five thousands before, <laughs> where, where it'll all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, how is this going to work? You know, and uh, this is the mic that goes in there. And this, you know, you can. You can slide this out for different style cylinders. It'll it can read pushing out or pushing in. Don't want to break that. Huh. No. That little arm looks like. You know, 
I broke more needles off. More of the needles in here. Uh -huh. Oh, really? Break off rather than... I mean, it wouldn't take much. You uh -huh. know, you wouldn't have to run this into much and you'd break it. Right. Another thing, when you're tightening it down in here, you can't tighten on this body too hard because it, you know, it's all precision stuff in here. And if you tighten down on it, it binds up and doesn't want to move. But they're pretty slick. I'm going to stop right here. Hey, guys, what we'll do is we'll make this video into a multi-part series so they're just not so long. Um, so it's come back for part two. It is kind of weird.